I took up the world. Welcome back to SMB Boxing, and today we're starting a new series called All Time Greatest Performances. As the name suggests, for this feature, we will be taking an in depth look at some of the finest nights in the ring from a selected fighter's career. And there's the white towel from the corner, and Shane Mosley has annihilated Antonio Mogherini. This is the redemption of Roberto Duran, the story of Duran versus Moore. In his dressing room, moments after his infamous 1980 Nomas fight against Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, as he did twice in the eighth round, turned his back again, but this time, it was on boxing altogether. Does this mean the end of boxing for Roberto? Yes, I'm not fighting anymore. This is final, permanent retirement. Definitivo. Yeah, definitivo. No Definitely, pelo. I'm not fighting anymore. Just five months earlier, Duran had brilliantly beat Leonard in Montreal and was considered as one of the best boxers in the world. But his reputation was left in tatters when he quit in New Orleans and offered stomach cramps as a post-fight excuse. Because at the end of the fifth round, I start getting cramps in my stomach and it kept getting worse and worse. Within hours of his rematch defeat, the public, the press, and rivals ridiculed Duran, with some claiming that the bout was fixed. Television and radio adverts featuring Duran were also rapidly pulled off the air. Have you ever known a fight to, to be like the one that you've seen in that ring tonight? I'm angry. You know, he got paid and I paid to come, and what happened? Like his reputation in boxing, Duran's stature as a national hero in his home country of Panama had taken a dramatic dive. And upon his return, stones were thrown at his house. And when he ventured out, he was often verbally abused. At just the age of 30, Duran's self-imposed exile from boxing was never going to last and he decided to seek redemption as a 154-pound junior middleweight. Durant's two main targets were becoming a world champion again and a third fight with Leonard. That's one of the reasons and the main reason why I'm coming back, because I am ashamed of the way Probably it more. happened, and I want to fight Leonard again. Nine months after the Nomas fight, Duran, who had ballooned up to over 180 pounds during his retirement, began his comeback with two decision victories in the space of two months against Nino Gonzalez and Luigi Manquillo, respectively. Roberto Duran. Well, it is a unanimous decision for Roberto Duran, the second in a row making his comeback try. And Although Duran was far from his best in both comeback fights, he got a shot at becoming a champion again against WBC title holder Wilford Benitez in January of 1982. After a competitive fight that went the full 15-round distance, Benitez won by close scores on all three of the judges' scorecards. Despite losing, Duran showed enough glimpses of his old self to temporarily silence a few of his doubters. The only thing I think you have to say, Carlos, is Duran did himself proud tonight. Yes, he did. He tried hard. He fought his hard on. Eight months later, fringe contender Kirkland Lang was hand-picked as a tune-up opponent for Duran with a big money showdown against Tony Ayala Jr. scheduled to take place in November. However, Duran put in a career worst performance and lost to Lang by a split decision, effectively canceling the Ayala Jr. fight in the process. During the bout, Duran's renowned aggression, timing, and hands of stone power no longer seemed to be there. I don't want to remember Duran this way. I want to remember him as the lightweight champion that had a stranglehold in that division for seven years. He doesn't look good as a junior middleweight. At 31 years of age, it may be all over for Hanson Stone. 
Longtime promoter Don King stormed into Duran's dressing room immediately after the fight and launched an angry 10-minute tirade at Duran, at the conclusion of which he told Duran he would never promote him again. When I seen him lose to a, a fighter, Kirkland Lane, who really couldn't tie his shoestrings, and I felt that it was time for Roberto to retire. Duran turned to King's rival Bob Arum to continue his career. At first, Aram was not interested in signing Duran, but changed his mind after top-ranked matchmaker Teddy Brenner told him that with the proper encouragement, Duran could be great again. Two months later, Duran took on Jimmy Batten in a walkout bout after Aaron Pryor had beaten Alexis Arguello in one of boxing's best ever fights. Weighing a career high of 157 pounds, Duran once again failed to impress, but would win a 10-round decision. The winner, Roberto in a last-ditch move to save Duran's career, Aram arranged a fight between Duran and former WBA welterweight champion Papino Cuevas in January of 1983. Cuevas had also been struggling in the ring. After losing his title by knockout to Thomas Hearns in 1980, he bounced back with two easy first-round knockout wins. But in his most recent fight, he lost a 10-round decision to the previously unknown Roger Stafford. It was a true crossroads fight for the former champions. A win would likely propel either one to a title shot, while a loss would mean obscurity. Both men got themselves into great shape for the fight. Cuevas weighed in at 149 pounds, while Duran, by his own words, trained like he never had before and surprised many by scaling a hard and trim 152 pounds, which was his lightest weight since the Nomas fight. Chickens, good luck. Chickens, good luck. In the opening round, Duran stalked Cuevas behind a probing jab. Cuevas had some success with body punches on the inside, but two clean right hands on the chin gave Duran the slight edge. But both uh, serious questions surrounding them. Good straight right hand by Duran. Style that he comes with, he will not change that much, even during the action of the fight, as you see Cuevas going to the body well on Duran. Good right hand by Duran up over the top, got inside on Cuevas. In the second round, Duran began to establish his jab and whipped in head and body combinations while making it clear that Cuevas' power didn't phase him at all. Duran at 74 and 4, his record. Okay. Good left hook by Cuevas and yet another, and those are the kind of left hooks that were decking people a couple of years before this fight. For the first time since beating Leonard in Montreal, Duran looked sharp and quick and clearly had the better of the round. So, so you can't be lulled to sleep. He had a notion to pull the string there, but held off on it. In the third round, Duran assumed complete control as a thrilling toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange saw him rattle Cuevas with a left hook. This is the toe-to-toe -to -toe action this crowd came to see. Left hand by Duran staggers Cuevas for a moment, but he comes right back. Cuevas not a good defensive fighter. He's all offense. and. Cuevas quickly recovered, but in the final 30 seconds of the round, a right uppercut on the inside from Duran buckled the Mexican's knees. Fists of stone, but he's got a head of stone too, it looks like. Under 30 seconds to go in this, the best round so far of the fight. Duran using his jab very effectively and showing his boxing skills. To the surprise of many, Former lightweight Duran was both the more resilient and more powerful fighter against a naturally bigger man. A minute into the fourth round, Duran wrought Cuevas with a huge right hand and followed it up with a flurry that sent him reeling into the corner for a scored knockdown. Cuevas is in all kinds of trouble. He's going down. After the referee finished the mandatory eight count, Duran trapped Cuevas on the ropes and viciously let both hands fly. Cuevas tried to fight back, but Duran proved to be too much. And then backing into the corner. A left hand, oh, big right hand by Duran. They have not done so yet here in round four. Cuevas is totally defenseless and is down. Second knockdown of the fourth round. 
Cuevas, the former welterweight champion, staggers to his feet. The referee says no, he cannot continue, and that's it. Roberto Duran with a TKO here in the fourth round. The fire was back inside of Manos de Piedra, and he wasted little time in calling out the WBA champion, Davey Moore. Okay, muchas gracias. Yes, the championship. He wants it now, and he wants it next, but can he do it against a new and young champion? Earlier on the same night, Moore had successfully defended his title against Gary Guyton, and following Duran's win over Cuevas, he accepted the challenge. Is there a fighter out there that you think would give you the recognition? Well, there's Hearns is out there, or Benitez, if he wants to cross over, if ever he want to fight more than once a year. Even Duran, uh, even, even, he's fighting now. Even Duran, tonight. he's fighting Pino yeah, Cuevas tonight. Yeah, all right. What that about? Moore had looked sensational since turning pro in 1980, and in just his ninth fight in 1982, he knocked out the previously unbeaten Tadashi Mahara to win the WBA title. He's been put down twice in round six, and Moore looking to end it right here. It is all over. So Davey Moore has come over from the Bronx, New York, to wrest the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship away from Tadashi Mahara. Over the next 16 months, Moore earned the boxing world's respect by knocking out top challenger Charlie Weir, former titleist Ayub Kaluli, and the man we've previously mentioned, Gary Guyton. In fact, he was on a nine-fight KO streak, and he fully expected to make Duran number 10. In a pre-fight interview with UPI, Moore was quoted as saying, I don't think it will be all that tough a fight. He passed his peak a long time ago, and I'm still getting close to reaching mine. The odds makers agreed with Moore and installed the 12 and 0 champion as a solid 5 to 2 favorite. Uh, well, I take every fight like every fight is just a fight. I take it like a gym workout. Gym workout, I find no pressure in the gym workout. I take the fights like that. Every fight is just a fight. The weigh in was revealing. Moore initially scaled at 156 pounds and had to go to a steam room at a local gym to sweat off a couple of pounds. Duran, like he did for the Cuevas fight, had no problems and weighed in at a hard and ready 152 pounds. For the first time in 10 years, the legendary New York venue Madison Square Garden was a 20,000 sellout. The date of the fight, June 16, 1983, also happened to be Durant's 32nd birthday. The pro Duran crowd cheered and waved homemade banners and flags of Panama as Duran made his way to the ring first. Manos de Piedra, the legend here in Madison Square Garden. And he comes in the side, and there they are, the Panamanian flags. We are ready for quite an emotional night of boxing. Duran then watched as the 24-year-old New Yorker Moore made his way to the ring and found himself booed in his home city. For Davey Moore, this might be a road fight. He, he, the fight might as well be in, in Panama because Davey Moore is nowhere near being the crowd favorite in this fight. The atmosphere was electric during the preliminaries, and true to form, the crowd, including a 17-year-old Mike Tyson, cheered on Duran and booed more. I'm 17 years old, I'm in Madison Square Garden, and right there in the front row, and I'm going, yeah, 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 and he goes like this. Yo, he's looking at me. Well, that was a sign. That's the sign I'm gonna make it big, because he saw me out of all those thousands of people. I thought it was all about me. He don't fucking know me. The cornermen of Duran's opponents often told their fighters not to look in Duran's eyes during the final stare down because Durant's intimidating look and presence had the ability to unsettle them. Moore, whether he was told to do the same or not, kept his head down until he was prompted by the referee to touch gloves. From the opening bell, both men came out probing with their jabs. Within the first 30 seconds, Durant slipped inside and started what would turn out to be a consistent and devastating body attack on Moore. To emphasize Duran's superb work downstairs in this fight, we're going to display a body shot count in the top right corner. He used that against such people as Ayub Kalule and one of his title defenses and Gary Guyton. A minute into the round, a solid right hand from Moore was followed by some great exchanges. Good left hand that time, but Duran slipped in on Moore. 
It will if he can land it. So hard to land that against Duran. Good uppercut by Moore. You saw Duran's head go flying back. Both fighters have demonstrated their best weapons with under 30 seconds to go in round one. In the final 10 seconds, Moore's effort to slip Durant's jab resulted in Durant's thumb poking him in the right eye. Upon impact, Moore was clearly bothered and pawed at the injury before backpedaling away from Durant until the bell rung. At the end of round one, round two comes your way after this. Early in the second round, both men got back behind their jabs, with Duran clearly targeting Moore's slightly swollen right eye. Staying under them. Both of them walked into straight left hands for each other. Duran trying to use his experience over 70 pro fights, maybe more though a champion, less than 15 pro fights. Just before the midway point, Duran countered a wide right hook from Moore with a straight right hand that sent him staggering back against the ropes. Good right Good by right Duran. by both. Duran sends Moore back. Duran followed it up by pounding Moore's body on the inside as the New Yorker tried to clear his head by holding. On two. Punching back egg for Davey Moore, the champion. Roberto Duran waiting in. Moore began to fire back and had some success, but his inexperience showed when Duran spun him around and unleashed another volume of punches. The body work of Duran is just tremendous in this second round. When Moore hit Duran with a flush combination after the bell to end the round sounded, Duran stared menacingly at the champion and then pointed him back to his corner. A lot of macho uh, taunting going on by Duran and uh, he's trying to play some mind games. In rounds three and four, Duran mixed in a lot more headshots to go with his sapping body attack. Additionally, Duran started to take less and less in return as he would often slip Moore's punches or turn his head to lessen the impact. Davey Moore trying to come at Duran, who's now back in his heels. And Duran is ripping those left hooks to the body. Moore is fighting him on the inside, not necessarily where I think Davey Moore wants to be. Davey Moore, who had been known to bounce around the ring, has very little spring at the moment. Effectively and landing, I think, bigger punches to the body and the head. Al, you can see a lot of fights, but quite obviously you don't hear the crowd getting into one. What a great deal of momentum Duran apparently has picked up since the Cuevas fight. Ernesto Magana is the referee from Mexico. Davey Moore, Roberto Duran in fighting here in the fourth. Davey Moore trying to throw a wild right hand, and here's that in fighting Al's been talking about by Duran. By the fifth round, Moore was still game, but his right eye had almost closed, and he was bleeding from the nose and lip. Puffiness over the right eye, a cut on the left, and you see why with a sharp right off of that left eye again off of Moore. There's another right hand by Duran. Moore has thrown some good shots of his own. Oh, well, he has, but then that left hook to the body is indicative of the work that Duran has done. He's thrown some rights and landed them, but they have not done as much damage as he anticipated. Straight left hand by Duran, got in on Moore's temple again. In the middle of the round, Duran demonstrated several great examples of taking the sting out of Moore's punches by turning his head. Uh, whatever the, whether intentional or not, whatever the case, it is uh, giving Moore a problem. As you can see here, when shown in real time, Moore's right hand looks powerful enough to have swiveled Duran's head on impact. However, when the footage is slowed down, you can clearly see that Duran turned his head with the punch to decrease the force of impact. In this case, the punch actually fell short and bounced off Duran's chest. It is uh, giving more a problem. There was a good right hand. You saw Duran kind of turn away from it, absorbing some of the shock. There's another one, and Moore just not able to hurt him with the right. Duran just standing up from the center of the ring, taking whatever Davey Moore can dish out. The sixth round was fought mostly at close range, with Duran looking so much stronger and fresher than a fatigued Moore. Duran is not hurting him. And he's fighting on the inside where the shorter and 
Duran with the less uh, reach can have bigger impacts, taking the pounding. Even though he hits Duran and makes these rounds sometimes fairly close, he's just not hurting. At this point, every punch Duran landed seemed to hurt more, and there were several occasions where the champion's tottering legs almost gave way, and he fell into Duran. Round number six, closing in on the final seconds here, Duran with the left hand. Exhausted, bloody, and swollen, Moore was there for the taking. Duran knew it and went for the knockout in the seventh round. So Duran has tagged him almost with a left and right of equal ability. There you see a left to the body and a right to the head. Now, of course, to amplify Al's comment, Magano has come up with two warnings to Davey Moore, and this the seventh round. You can see the blood streaming down the face of the champion now. Look at, look at Roberto Duran just kind of saying, hey. He sneered at Davey Moore and said, uh-uh, that didn't hurt. A left hand by Duran since Moore reeling back to the ropes. With 16 seconds left in the round, Duran connected with a huge overhand right that sent Moore crashing on the seat of his pants. The body in the head of Davey Moore. Moore gets that right over the top. Now the left right, oh, Moore is down. A left right, a big strong right sends Moore to the canvas. Moore slowly to get to his feet, he staggers to his feet. Moore bravely pushed himself up at the count of eight, and the round ended without another punch thrown. In his excitement, Duran accidentally sat down on Moore's stool, and one of his cornermen had to rush across the ring to escort him to the correct corner. The contest was clearly decided, but instead of calling a halt, Moore's cornermen unwisely allowed him to come out for the eighth round. Within 30 seconds, Duran's power shots once again had Moore reeling all over the ring. Davey Moore trying to fight back, but Duran has, has it all left. This one could be over shortly as Moore continues to reel around the ring with that big right hand of Duran, the biggest weapon of the night. With every brutal blow that Duran landed, more and more ringside observers, including former light heavyweight champion Jose Torres, can be seen pleading for the fight to be stopped. But the referee seemed to be almost oblivious to the damage being inflicted and let the fight go on for far too long, as did the champion's corner. Moore's mother and girlfriend were also said to have fainted at ringside during Duran's eighth round onslaught. Moore in all kinds of trouble and Duran just ripping shots. After over a minute and a half of completely unnecessary punishment, Moore's corner finally threw in the towel. Astonishing. at Moore. Astonishing. Oh, look at the right Moore hand. Is not Moore is out on his feet. Moore just hangs on trying to keep on his feet. Finally. Ernesto Magana finally steps in and this fight has now been stopped. After his victory, a sobbing Duran stood on the ring apron and joined in with the crowd as they chanted his name and sang him happy birthday. Duran was now a three-division world champion, but more importantly, his reputation was restored, and the disgrace of Nomas was finally in the past. In another memorable moment, Sugar Ray Leonard congratulated Duran during a post-fight interview. Thanks for watching. What all-time greatest performance would you like to see featured in this series? Let us know in the comments. Hopkins is staring down the media. He is looking at every reporter at ringside one face after another. He is making his point to the boxing writers and boxing reporters, and he is establishing his eminence once again. Thanks for watching SMB Boxing, and we'll see you in the next video. On a Thursday night in Miami, Nicaraguan bantamweight Melvin Lopez completely froze Yison Vargas' senses and body with a fierce left hand. Él sabe que ahora tiene que dominar un poquito más el ring. No. Oh. oh. El nocao de la noche.